What a week, huh? We obviously had a bit of a rough go of it this week, uh, just as Nintendo fans in general, right? Uh, it was a partially exciting week because we finally got Nintendo's E3 plans confirmed, 40-minute direct, three hours of epic treehouse goodness. I got to finally organize a bit of our E3 schedule and get that out to you guys as well. I hope you're still uh, planning to check us out during E3. We have a really big show going on, but this isn't to talk about that. I already did a dedicated video on that, and obviously we'll have different announcements and stuff like that happening over the course of the next week, including who's going to be uh, getting opportunities to play against us for prizes during E3. Obviously, we could talk about more of the items that we'll be giving away during E3, but that's neither here nor there. What I want to focus on today is the week that was, well, all about that Switch Pro, really. Uh, I am as upset or disappointed or let down by the lack of a Switch Pro announcement as the rest of you. And we need to talk about why we expected a Switch Pro announcement this last week in the first place and then get into why, well, I mean, honestly, like you, like some of you guys, I'm still going to be like holding my breath every day, every hour of this next upcoming week and every day until it gets announced because I am someone who does believe the Switch Pro actually exists. I don't think people like Takahashi Machizuki have just been lying for years. Uh, he has sources at manufacturing. Uh, that is something that obviously is a, a legit thing. And then obviously there's game developer sources. And we're getting some of that word from Tom Phillips, a news editor at Eurogamer, who you know responded to someone on Twitter just yesterday saying, hey, a lot of the fervor around this is that he knows people that are actually making games for the Switch Pro or that are going to take advantage of the Switch Pro. And they're kind of getting frustrated by the fact that Nintendo won't even release like a one-line announcement about a new device so they can start showing their games running on it because they obviously have information when, of what, when this device is going to come out, which it sounds like this year. Uh, so there is a bit of trepidation as well uh, with the developers, at least the ones that uh, are planning to release games on it and want to use this E3 marketing opportunity uh, to do so. And Takahashi Machizuki actually talked about that in his original Bloomberg report uh, where he mentioned that, hey, one of the reasons that he feels uh, that there's a good chance it gets revealed before E3 is because third-party companies have put a little bit of pressure on Nintendo to reveal it now so they could actually talk about their games during the time when gamers are paying the most attention. But obviously we know that Nintendo does beat to the beat of their own drum. And if you think about prior announcements for other revisions in Switch, AKA the Switch Lite, they did that on July 10th and it was shadow dropped and nobody knew it was coming. And yeah, Takashi Machizuki actually warned us that uh, we were gonna get this device and people tried you know, digging up patents and all the shadows, but nothing about the patents really lined up with what the device was. And then everything that Takashi Machizuki said the device was turned out to be true when it was revealed. And he actually talked about that during June of 2019 about how Nintendo has this light device coming, all, all, all the, uh, you know, how it's going to be used a, 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 an upgraded or a, sh you know, a shrunk down SOC, uh, how it was going to, uh, you know, have non-detachable Joy-Cons and it won't, you won't be able to dock it and pretty much uh, gave us an idea of what the form factor was going to be like and how it was going to be a little bit smaller and it turned out that he was completely right on all of it. I think he even teased what colors were going to be at launch and a lot of this came from manufacturing sources but also a couple of developers that had access to it at the time uh, just because I, I don't really know why nothing in development really changed with this new device. Maybe for battery life purposes because, you know, it did at the time have better battery life than the original Switch. Obviously, they then moved the SoC into the you know, current, you know, normal version of Switch, the red box version, which is what this is. All these are third-party Joy-Cons on here. But still, um, we're left in this funny place where uh, Takahashi Machizuki set the table, and he's such a trusted, reliable source of information, getting things from game developers and getting things from manufacturing sources in Japan, uh, that it kind of leads into this whole um kerfuffle around the switch pro because then tom phillips came out and backed up the reporting they said europe gamer has independently verified exactly what takahashi machizuki has been saying about the switch pro and he was the first person to actually use the words that it would be unveiled imminently 
And that word imminently is really what got the internet in a tizzy because Takahashi Machizuki just said it's likely to be revealed before E3. He didn't even guarantee it would be. But obviously that was already getting people in a tizzy saying, okay, this past week, okay, next week. In fact, a lot of our base expectations for it maybe even being revealed next week is because Takahashi Machizuki is such a reliable you know, person, a, a writer, a researcher, an editorial writer, a news reporter for Bloomberg. Previously, Wall Street Journal is, is his prior outlet. Working at some big name places that there's still people that expect it next week just because of what he said, even though he never guaranteed it would be revealed before E3. He just knows that there's a lot of pressure on Nintendo for it and feels that it's likely to be revealed before then. And again, Tom Phillips used the word imminently, and that really just got the internet going. And then, all, of course, you had all the insiders kind of hopping on this train. Emily Rogers reconfirming all this information as well, also using the word imminent. Uh, then you had, obviously, uh, that guy from the Xbox Era podcast saying Thursday. We had retailers getting some stuff up, some of them fake, some of them real, about you know taking pre-orders. We have customer service lines right now doing really weird things. Uh, so there's been all these reports coming out that, oh, Best Buy customer service is saying uh, they'll be taking pre-orders on this day. I, June 18th was one date that was thrown in there. Uh, An Amazon customer service rep said June 8th. All these customer service reps, by the way, have no idea when these products are coming out. If you wonder why I haven't made a video on this stuff, I've had you know dozens of people send me all their DMs and personal conversations with these customer service reps. I went out and started talking to these customer service reps as well and got very similar information. Basically, you go to customer support on Amazon or Best Buy.com, etc., and you do a little chat room with them and you ask them about the new Nintendo device and when it's going to be available for pre-order, and they eventually toss out a date. And maybe it's because there is a date in their back-end systems i don't know what i do know is these are just you know bottom rung people at these companies that might just also be giving you something so to leave you alone or leave you satisfied so you give them a good review uh, uh you know they actually have incentives to to maybe do that uh, i'm not saying they're lying to you guys i'm just saying that is it really reliable when we're hearing different days june 8th june 18th i think i saw june 24th at one point when these are all for when they'll take pre-orders I honestly, and I've subscribed to this until Takahashi Machizuki made his article, that if it was going to come out around the same time the Switch Lite did in September, uh, that it would be announced in July. And if it's going to come out this holiday season, that it would be announced in September. That's what I was kind of subscribing to this whole time until Takahashi Machizuki opened his mouth. So here we are now where everyone is all disappointed. Everyone's upset. And I get it. Uh, whether you are someone who was super, super hyped uh, and, and, and just got felt like you were let down, felt like you were lied to, uh, or whether you're someone who, hey, I've been saying the Switch Pro is fake this whole time, and now I'm going to revel in all these people that are upset. I don't know that any of these you know, attitudes are actually conductive to being positive. Uh, the bottom line is we have too many reliable people saying that this thing exists, and a lot of the flack is being directed not at Takahashi Machizuki, not even at Tom Phillips, who was the first person to use the word imminently. It's being tossed out at a lot of the content creators. It's being tossed out um, at some of the supposed insiders, you know, whether it's Emily Rogers or this Nick guy from Xbox era or uh, whether it's, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, Nate the Hate out there who, who put out there uh, a little Twitter storm himself saying that, hey, he's not as confident about the information he had a week ago. Uh, you know, today and that, you know, he doesn't feel like it's going to be revealed before E3. You know, maybe they end up showing, uh, you know, at Summer Game Fest. Uh, Jeff Keighley was able to get the Xbox Series X reveal at the Game Awards. So why can we, you know, dismiss that? Or is it possible that we're going to get a Twitter drop any day? Is it possible that despite Nintendo saying, hey, there's going to be a focus on software, that would actually make it even more shocking to unveil it at E3? Right, And I'm not even saying that these things are going to happen. I'm just throwing out there that we don't really know. And as much as I've talked you know, over the last couple of days where we all need to take responsibility for our own hype, we need to hype responsibly, obviously I realize the role that I play in that and the role these insiders play in that, the role that Takahashi Machizuki and Tom Phillips and, and the media play in it. Jason Schreier has actually gone out there and basically you know, said, hey, he knows that this thing is real as well. This isn't fake news. It's just kind of a, hey, you know, there's a lot of uh, 
anticipation uh, for when this thing's going to be unveiled, not only by Nintendo fans, but by the developers that are touching on games. And there has been some pressure put on Nintendo to unveil it. And Nintendo is just maybe concerned about unveiling it too soon. Not because the system's not ready to show off, because if it is going into mass production, which, by the way, you don't have to believe Emily Rogers when she said, oh, it's going into mass production now. I mean, heck, Takashi Machizuki himself said, by July, it's going to go into mass production. So she's kind of just regurgitating information that's already out there, if, you're, if we're just honest about it. So, look, if this thing is real, which I'm in the camp that it is, I think... You know, especially when you set aside the, the Twitter leakers, insiders, uh, you know, people on Reset Era, Reddit, it doesn't really matter. When you set them aside and you just focus on, okay, who are the people that would have contacts? Who are the people that it is their job to find out this information? Well, that's what you have Takahashi Matsuzuki, Tom Phillips, and Jason Schreier for, and all of them agree, even Jeff Grubb agree, this thing is real. Okay? So the question is, when is Nintendo going to unveil it? And the reality is nobody knows. Nobody actually knows. Nobody has heard from a Nintendo representative when this thing's going to be revealed. And the frustrating part is that all these reporters out there are just going off of the information they have available. Third party, you know, people that are actually working on games, you know, have been saying that they feel like this thing's going to be revealed soon because they know around the time it's coming out. You know, Takahashi Machizuki set the table for that, September or October. That could be revealed now. Of course, when they released in September last time, you know, they unveiled in July. So if it's going to be in September, won't they unveil it in July? If it's going to be in October, won't they unveil it in August? It, you know, why would Nintendo give us an even longer runway uh, to release when it could actually hurt Switch sales? And I think that's what Nintendo is ultimately worried about. If this platform is coming out in September, why would they announce it before July? If this platform is coming out in October, why would they announce it before August? If they announce it too soon, it could actually kill hype. Remember, Nintendo's got games to sell. They got systems to sell. They got Mario Golf Super Rush coming out this month. They got Skyward Sword HD coming out next month. And as much as the hype would be built for this, this thing, we've been built for this anticipation and felt burned and burned and burned to the point that many of us are just starting to be like, hey, maybe this thing just isn't real. We got to remember that a lot of our belief that this thing was coming soon started with Takahashi Machizuki, was exasperated by Tom Phillips, and then, obviously, all these insiders, um, you know, kind of hopped on the train. And, obviously, we, as YouTube content creators, did the best that we could. I don't know what more could be expected. Setting aside all the insiders, Tom Phillips said it's imminent. Takahashi Matsuzuki said it's likely to be revealed before E3. That was alone enough for me to get hyped probably enough for you guys to get hyped as well so the question is what do we do moving forward well we got to be patient you know they say patience is a virtue and they say patience is a virtue for a reason because having patience is not easy i have to find it in myself to have patience for my three children every day i have to find it in myself to have patience at my work every day i have to find it in myself to sometimes have patience with my fiance when she's struggling with things i have to find it within myself to have patience sometimes with my own YouTube stuff. We tried to do a live stream last night. We ended up streaming for a couple hours, but I was so frustrated, not just with the events of the day. I was frustrated with the equipment. I'm frustrated the switch just fell. Finding the patience to deal with the things in life that we can't control is hard. And that's what we have to exercise right now with Switch Pro. Could it drop on Monday? Yes. Could it drop at E3? Yes. Could it not be talked about till July? Yes. Could it not be talked about until September? Or could it not be talked about till next year? All possible. I'm fairly confident that this device exists. I don't think Takahashi Machizuki would have been talking about it all this time if it didn't. Anyone who's ever bet against Takahashi Machizuki's reports in the past has gotten burned. So, yeah, it's probably real. And we don't even need these people to confirm to us that it's real. Just logically speaking, look at what happened with something like the DS. We got the DS Lite, and then we got the more powerful DSi. Look at the 3DS. There was the 2DS, and obviously the new Nintendo 3DS and 3DS XL. All of those were, had different revisions. Smaller, lighter, more portable, bigger, 
beefier, more powerful. And like it or not, no matter what Nintendo calls a Switch, they refer to it as a home console. Does this look like a home console to you? No. This looks like a tablet. You know, detachable controllers? It's a portable gaming machine with a built-in kickstand that you happen to be able to set in a dock to use on your TV. And yeah, it overclocks when you do that. And yeah, it leads to better looking games and, and all that jazz. And yeah, it is kind of the idea of bringing home console games on the go. And yeah, you know, before this generation, it was unimaginable to be able to play a game like Breath of the Wild on the go. Super Mario Odyssey on the go. Splatoon 3 coming up on the go. It was unimaginable that this would even be The Witcher 3. I get it. But also, it's mobile technology. Much higher chance. And, and if you're wondering, well, okay, how do we know they're going to give it that kind of treatment in comparison to the handhelds? Well, what was one thing they did with the handhelds a lot? Different colors, different themed versions. And look what's happening with the Switch. There's been Splatoon versions. There's been Mario versions. There's been Monster Hunter versions. There's been Fortnite versions. These are all the kind of things that existed exclusively in the handle side. Do you remember a Fortnite version of Wii? I mean, there was no Fortnite back then, but you know what I mean? Like, we didn't have these custom-themed home consoles. The closest we got was a little trim on the black 32 gigabyte, you know, ta Wii U tablet for the Wind Waker. Like, Nintendo doesn't do themed home consoles. Rarely ever. Yet here we are with Nintendo Switch, and there's tons of these theme systems. Tons of these recolors. Tons of the docks being redone. There's a Super Smash Bros. one, right? Like, tons of this stuff. There's a whole bunch of different Switch light colors. They keep coming out with new ones. We just got the cool blue for Miitopia. What's going to come next? These are all practices Nintendo has been doing with their handheld devices. So why would we expect them to also not continue the practice of releasing a bigger, more powerful version? Or at least a similar size, more powerful version. We don't need Takahashi Machizuki to confirm to us that we're going to get what we've always been getting for the past decade or two. It should be expected. Is it going to be called the Pro? Probably not, no. Probably it's new Nintendo Switch. Switch Plus, Switch Advance. It'll just say Nintendo Switch on the dock. It'll just say Nintendo Switch on the back. But it's still a Switch Lite. It's still a Switch. It's still in the Switch family. It should be expected. So that's why I believe. Because it should have been expected from day one. And like the new Nintendo 3DS, it possibly could become that new SKU, the new default SKU that takes over. So, yeah. We're just working with the information available. We're doing our best. And I'm just as disappointed as the rest of you. It obviously would have been really good for all of us if this thing would have been revealed last week on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, or on Friday. It'd be really good if it was revealed this upcoming week. And there's a lot of naysayers out there that I know a lot of us believers will really want to prove wrong in a way that we currently can't. But we can look at Nintendo's history. We can look at the reliable reporters out there to know this thing is real. Now look, I get it, okay? It's tough out there. But I'm holding on fast. And I know you're going to go down to the comments. There's going to be a lot of naysayers. There's going to be a lot of you coming at me. A lot of you coming at the believers. A lot of you screaming fake news. A lot of you coming at me and going, you are milking the hell out of Switch Pro. You're just doing it for the clicks. You're just trying to make that cash money and make it rain on all of you. Or at least make it rain on me. And I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, the videos don't make money. Do we have ads for none? Every video we, we, we do makes money. But that's being disingenuous to the point. It really is. Because I only make videos about the things I care about. I passionately care about a more powerful device. The Switch is the first Nintendo portable system that I have actually cared about since the Game Boy. Yeah, I owned the Game Boy Advance and the DS and the 3DS, but I barely played games on those platforms. I only, only grew up with the Game Boy, and then I became a PC gamer. I became a, a console gamer. 
but the Switch is my home console, also my handheld, and I really appreciate it. So for the first time in my entire time of being a gamer, I actually care about an upgraded Nintendo system. So the Pro matters to me a little bit more than, say, the new 3DS did or the DSi did. In fact, a significant amount more. Because while I own those devices too, you know, I only played Zelda on them. I plan to play hundreds of games on my Switch Pro in the future and from the past. Games I already own and games I intend to buy. So yeah, forgive me a bit if I tend to care more about this Switch Pro device than I've cared about any upgraded device in the history of Nintendo. So sure, videos like this probably get the clicks, get the views. I don't know. I have no idea. There's videos I drop all the time that I think are going to perform well and don't. Real news videos. Real information. At the end of the day, I'm only human. And I'm really excited for the prospect of this device. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Uh, as always, hype responsibly. Um, you know, we're all in this together. And I'll catch you in the next video. Also, by the way, go Bucks, baby. Bucks versus Nets today. Hell yeah. Let's go, Bucks. Go, Bucks, go. Go, Bucks, go. Go, Bucks.